Okie dokie. Uh, zinch. Zinch, zinch, zinch with the DLC. What do I think? Multiplayer focused, right? Campaign? I don't know, man. Changeling campaign looks cool. That's fine. I'm not really a big campaign guy. But in the multiplayer scene, I see a lot of people panicking about Zinch. Should you? Where are they going to fall? Well, before the DLC, they were probably A tier, depending on who you talk to, A or B tier or something like that. Um, yeah, high skill cap, good to play, all that stuff. Uh, quick thoughts. With the DLC, if nothing changes before it goes live, S+, plus, S+, plus tier. These guys are going to be fucking cracked. Bretonia was nerfed, Ogre Kingdoms were nerfed, Grand Cathay was buffed, but I think the S tier is going to be Grand Cathay and these guys. Maybe Grand Cathay, these guys in, in Kislev, but, uh, but these guys are the best of the best, by far. Just not even close. So, what happened? What, what happened? Uh, let's take Zinch as a whole real quick. Faction weaknesses. The front line sucks. The front line is slow expensive if you want them to hold and very hard to get them to rush they don't do very much damage outside of forsaken but forsaken are very fragile in their own right uh okay their cavalry is not great they do a lot of skirmish and uh their monsters aren't very good so zinch as a faction was already a a tier a b depending on who you talk to because they had very strong lords and strong skirmish kite type things Okay, okay. Uh, DLC, DLC made that a bit of a problem. So the Changeling, to go through some of the stuff that people are freaking out about, that's not actually a big deal. The Changeling, I think, sucks. I think the Changeling is wildly overrated. The only time I have noticed the Changeling being good is when he turns into Bellicor. Because otherwise, if you take all of his spells off, he's 3,500 gold for a piss-poor character. 4,000 HP. 45-35 for melee stats, non-armor-piercing weapon strength, which, I mean, it is it is what it is. He only has 35 armor. So, like, in his changeling form, he absolutely sucks. As a Zinch caster, he's on the ground. He's foot. So blue fire can't get the angles you want out of it. And other than that, the Zinch lore is is fine. It's, it's good, but, like, without blue fire being at a high angle, it's tough and he has no personal healing. Okay, so, the like, the changeling himself is probably a character you're never going to spend actual time being. So it's all about his transformation. Well, what transformation is worth 3,500 gold with the huge caveat that you get no mounts and no items. You get abilities and you get spells. That's it. So if you if people, I've heard people talking about, oh, and you don't get the changeling's abilities while you're that person. So I've heard people talking about, well, Imric on his dragon with blue fire of Zinch. No, fuck that. You don't get the dragon and you don't get blue fire when you're Imric. You are foot Imric. Okay. Or like Helmand Gorst on his corpse cart. I believe he is foot Helmand Gorst. And Invocation Act doesn't affect the rest of your army. You kind of get what I'm, I'm throwing out here? So you would need someone that doesn't have a mount uh, that makes them strong to be worth 3,500 gold for a butt-naked changeling. And then you're going to transform into this person. You're going to be this person. So you need to be someone that's worth 3,500 gold. Now, you might think, oh, well, the, the dragon casters are pretty good. You can't transform into a dragon. So you're getting Yanbo on foot. That's it. Xiao Ming on foot. That's it. Okay. Well, well, what about Malice? You could turn into Malice Darkblade and get to Zarka and you could get an extra extra life. And then when you get tired of being to Zarka, you could turn back into the changeling. Nope. Malice doesn't get to Sarkin. It's a transformation. So you're pretty much looking at the Greater Demons. The Greater Demons are the only ones with this price point that could be worth it. Well, let's go through them quick. Nakari has no castable he healing. So you'd have to get Nakari's natural healing uh, from Shattering Stuff. So you're, you're getting a 600 gold discount. Not even. You're getting a 500 gold discount on Nakari. And that counts all the spells. Even if you're not going to use all of them. Okay, Nakari's probably out. Scarbrand? Scarbrand's cheaper than the Changeling. <laughs> You're paying more for fucking Scarbrand, who's already not meta. Okay, he's out. Uh, it leaves the main two people talk about. Kugath and Bellicor. Kugath, he has been tried against me three times. This is an early access testing, so as we get like hundreds of players playing hundreds of games, we'll see if Kugath useful, is useful. So far, no. Absolutely not. Um, the problem with Kugath is he is not supported at all by Zinch's playstyle. So you would need a pretty hardcore Zinch blob and then turn into Kugath and just hope it works out from there. 
But everything Zinch has is so fucking expensive. Like, Kugath, the, the Nurgle blobs work because Kugath has passive regeneration auras from some of his other helpers, which I know what you're saying, and wait, we'll get to Akold, Hellbrass, whatever the fuck. We'll get to him. But normally you have passive AoE heals that can heal up Kugath, because Kugath is a Mortis Engine, he has a spell that heals himself, but he doesn't actually have passive healing. Um, you have the Barons of the Bog that decrease enemy damage, you have things that decrease enemy melee attack, your army ability stacks off of you taking damage, uh, you have Nurglings, which are cheap chaff with a high HP pool, you have Plague Bearers, which are cheap-ish medium infantry with an amazing HP pool, like, you have a bunch of stuff in your roster that supports it. Zinch doesn't have bumpers and grinders like that. And you don't get army ability for taking damage. And the army abilities have healing in them. The, the tier 2, low, uh, I, I believe it's fecundity or whatever. The tier 2 army ability also is healing. So there's a lot less healing to go around for this Kugath blob. And your infantry aren't built to hold with you like that. Or at least not for the price point that you'd normally get. So the synergies aren't there. I just haven't seen Kugath be any good. He usually transforms into Kugath and just fucking dies. Then there's Bellicor. This one is the only one that's so far actually been pretty good. So if you're taking the Changeling, you're pretty much just taking Bellicor for a cost decrease over what Naked Bellicor does. And again, I don't think he's game-breaking. He is strong. But the main problem with the Changeling... You could just take this fucking guy with Regrowth, the best spell in the game, and Pendulum, which I've been enjoying, or Blue Fire, another best spell in the game, so either of those, if you need crowd clearing or if you need sniping or whatever, you could take Kairos with these. He has better winds of magic. Yeah, he has better winds of magic tools than the Changeling does, which charges your army ability. Because the spells are charge your Zinch army abilities. So like, if you really wanted to get that, maybe cut that. This is a pretty competitive build with him. And look, you're 1,200 gold less expensive for a better fucking lord than Bellicor with better magic than Bellicor that's more synergistic with the Zinch roster. No, the Changeling is not going to be this wildly overpowered problem. Kairos is still the best lord by far for Zinch. Okay. The 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 elephant in the room. Akold Hellbrass, you might be... you. I know a lot of you out there are planning some crazy blobs with Hellbrass. He sucks ass. He is actual garbage. Thorn's Aura is a procable thing, so it's not, like, constant. It's just every once in a while you can pop minus 8 leadership, and it costs 200 gold. The Windblade does very little damage. It looks super cool. Does very little damage. Costs 200 gold. If you cut both those, he's still 1350 for a foot character who has okay stats, but I was he, for me, he couldn't even bump and grind with the best of them. He does have perfect bigger and heal per second. But it's only on himself, and that is the big problem. A lot of these blobs are assuming that his healing is area of effect. It's not. He only heals himself. And he's 1350 for a foot character that only heals himself and does okay damage. Sigvald is way better at just doing this exact thing. And I don't know why you would need it. He's not really a threat. In every game I saw him, I just ignored him. And then I won the game around him. Blue Scribes also suck. They're trash. They're just huge trash. If you take off their only ability, they are 2,300 gold. Tiny, tiny health pool. No armor. Dog shit melee stats. Their missile strength is really bad. It looks really good, but it's just, it's the same as the Herald of, uh, the Herald of Zinch, and that shit does zero damage. So you're just doing it to get random ass spells, which are okay, but not for a 2,300 gold caster. He is as much as Kairos. He is as much as... Kairos! So Blue Scribes suck. Eric Cold sucks. Changeling is fine, but not great. Okay, human boy. You just mentioned a bunch of things that suck. Where's the S++ tier come in? Zongors. Zongors are terrifyingly overpowered. So they're not as... They're not as sexy to talk about as, like, Grail Knights, where you can watch Grail Knights slap through five units of Halberds in a row, and you're like, that's crazy overpowered! But... This guy has a silver shield, 80 armor, barrier uh, for 700 gold, making him extremely tanky. But that's not all. He has vanguard deployment. Okay, that's also kind of spooky. What does Woodsman even do, by the way? Past the trees. Okay, no one gives a shit about that. High leadership, relatively. Better than Marauder's uh, leadership. They also have Primal Fury, so he gets ITP and 5 or melee attack. 
Pretty good charge bonus for an infantry. Oh, and he gets 20% more damage as you cast spells as Zinch. So you're going to be casting motherfucking spells. It's it's just wild. Like, nothing on their unit card is really sexy. But the whole unit in general is so cost effective. So amazing. 100 models, which is nice. Because um, Chaos Warriors... Oh, the Chaos Warriors also have 100. But they're much slower. Yeah, they're much slower. Zongors just feel really fucking good. They feel insane for Zinch. They'll fight till the very end. They don't ever feel bad on leadership. They get a lot of damage done, and uh, they're the front line you wish you always had. So those are insane. So Zinch is one of his weaknesses. Was an aggressive front line. You you have one now, and they're extremely good. Chaos Knights got fixed, so they feel real nice. In all the games I've brought Chaos Knights to Zinch, they feel amazing. And then, and then you have the elephant in the room that everybody was talking about. Oh, also the Screamer ROR is incredible. That is incredible. But um, Cockatrice is fine. It's just like a better Manticore with its petrifying gaze, lowers other people's melee attack. It's, it's good. It's it's good. It's solid. I have nothing to, to mention about it. The Mutalith Vortex Beast, I made a separate video about it. The Mutalith Vortex Beast ROR sucks ass, but the basic one? The basic one is insane, and we need to talk about it. All right. Uh, 10,000 HP pool with barrier. 70 armor is not that impressive. It's leadership. Oh, th that's a weird thing. That's a very weird and I think dumb thing. The Mutal Fort Dex Beast is just like a regular mortal monster. It'll route. It's not unbreakable like a Chaos Bond, which it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. But it's also not demonic, which is just stupid. So it can route, which is a problem that we'll get to later. But yes, it can route. So it has none of the downsides of being demonic. A uh, pretty solid melee attack, a very impressive bonus versus large of 30, giving it 88 melee attack versus anything large. Armor piercing damage, because why not? So it's inc it's, it's a pretty good melee combatant um, overall, causes terror. It has a plus 8 melee attack aura for everything around it, including itself, so why wouldn't you? And it has a mortis engine, so it's an anti-large, armor piercing, duelist monster with a mortis engine with buffs for its friends but don't worry it has a second mortis type ability it has two for one so uh, it's on a cooldown but every so often if it's engaged in melee it'll just fart out nine damage per second in a in a radius around it and everybody that gets touched by it gets a debuff so it has two pseudo mortis engines a debuff for your enemies a buff for your allies it itself is an anti-large duelist and it's only 2,000 gold, which is actually pretty good for the sort of thing. That's insane. That is insane. They gave it everything. The one thing I will give them credit for is they gave it a functioning hitbox, which is huge. Kugath Plaguefather does not have a functioning hitbox. The original Mortis Engine, what we name the effect after, does not have a working hitbox. So if you surround the Mortis Engine, or if you surround Kugath with Spearmen, it'll take them an inordinately long amount of time to kill said object. The Mutalith Vortex Beast does not have that problem. If it gets surrounded by Spearmen, it'll take a lot of damage, it'll die. Which is fair, which is fine, which is balanced. Honestly, I've been playing with this thing at 2,000 gold and everything but the and the kitchen sink thrown at it. It is good. It is good. It could use some nerfs. It's not broken overpowered. But it is good. It's very squishy. It feels squishy, and that's nice. It's big, tall, doesn't have crazy armor, so basic archers can poke it down. Its hitbox is functional, so spears can really poke it down. Things feel good about it. It is strong, but not OP. But wait, my friends, it's not a demonic unit. So if you lower its leadership, it's not going to instantly crumble away. Meaning if this thing routes, it's going to have the normal mortis engine problems of when it's routing, it's still dealing this fucking double AOE damage to everything that's trying to follow it, trying to push it off the map. Okay, that's a little bit of a problem. I'll admit it's 66 speed makes it pretty hard to keep up with for infantry and stuff, unlike Kugath or the mortis engine. Uh, regular, you can keep up with an infantry. Okay, those are problems, but human boy, I still don't see why it's broken. Oh yeah, you have Kairos motherfucking Fate Weaver with regrowth, which is unnerfed. It is the exact same it's always been. So no healing nerfs. This thing can fucking heal cap every goddamn game, and that makes it insane. That also pairs with the fact that it routes like a normal ass unit. So as it's routing, Kairos can throw an overcasted regrowth on that bitch, get it huge. And that it'll rally, come back into the fight at full HP, because it's not fucking demonic. It's just, it's wild. It's wildly overpowered. So recap from the start of the video, what did I say? Zinch's weaknesses are an aggressive frontline. Boom, Zongors. 
his cavalry is kind of weak. Boom, Chaos Knights are fixed, which is a fix that should have happened. Sure, that's that's fine. And they have bad monsters. Give them a better Manticore, which is it's good. I have no complaints about that one. Oh yeah, and give it the best monster in the fucking game. And the only weakness was good programming and giving this giant monster a giant hitbox. But don't worry, that's countered by the fact that healing wasn't fucking nerfed and Kairos has it for some reason. So yes, half the D DLC of Zinch are pretty underwhelming. The Changeling is whatever. Akhold sucks. The Blue Scribes suck. Who gives a shit about them? But like, but the things that were added just plugged all the weaknesses in Zinch's roster. And Zinch's roster is now just fucking incredible. You have the best spells. You have the best lords. You have some of the best infantry. You have the best monsters. You have some of the best cavalry. You're just the best. You're just the best. Zinch is going to be a goddamn terror. Rawr. Subscribe, yes, yes.